The B cell response is basically triggered by either an allergen or an antigen. And a drug that's immunogenic is perceived as an antigen by the B cell that basically will be identified through the B cell receptors. The B cell then will internalize and metabolize that antigen and present the specific T cell epitope of that antigen to the T cell, differentiating it into a Th2 with production of interleukin-4, which is critical for the B cell differentiation maturation into plasma cell, which is the responsible cell that produces the antibodies, IgG, IgM, IgE, and all of these are now antibodies that identify and recognize the original danger signal, either the allergen, the drug that's immunogenic, or another type of antigen. This particular engagement with the T cell will also produce mature B cells into memory cells that are also specific for that particular danger signal. Let's begin reviewing the primary antibody response. So for now, let's forget the memory cells. When we have the challenge, which is the first time that a signal is perceived as a danger signal, the naive B cell will differentiate into the activated B cells. These activated B cells were driven by CD4 TH2 cells and signaling. They are specifically identifying the danger signal. They differentiate into plasma cells that are the ones responsible for the production of antibodies. And what we have first is the short-lived plasma cells. This process takes anywhere between five and 15 days, depends on the danger signal, and it also depends on the immunological status of the individual. How good is the immune response of the individual when they encounter this danger? I want to also mention that there's an exception to this timeline. The very fast response that occurs with allergic or anaphylactic reactions that can be within minutes, and it's characterized by IgE, is covered in a different um, tutorial in YouTube. Besides the anaphylactic responses, the other B cell response, as I mentioned, takes about uh, a week or so to have the titers detectable. In the y-axis is the amount of antibodies shown in this hypothetical graph, where the blue curve is how the antibodies start rising until they get to the peak. When they get to the peak in this primary response, it's basically IgM. These are the product of these short-lived plasma cells, and they all identify the danger signal. A few of them could be IgG, if you want to look at the isotype uh, switch video I have, I'm also adding a link to that video. What happens over time if the individual is not exposed to that same danger signal is that the titers of the antibodies now are going to go down. And it's basically because there are some long lived plasma cells in the bone marrow. These were triggered by the same initial danger signal that in time, if there's no further exposure to the danger signal, they will eventually disappear and the titers will go back to zero. That is the primary antibody response. The secondary antibody response is characterized by having memory B cells. What this means is that the B cells have created memory against the original danger signal. So when we encounter the same danger signal or something similar, our B cells are very quickly able to differentiate into plasma cells and produce very high levels of antibodies to the danger signal. These are now IgGs because they have matured and they can effectively deal with the danger signal. Like if it is an infectious agent, they can do this. Now, the characteristic of this secondary response is not only that there's very high titers, but it responds very quickly to this re-challenge. There are many references to immunology and immune responses. I highly recommend the Federation of Clinical Immunology Societies courses. They have several different courses available for you. I hope you enjoyed this explanation and please check my YouTube channel for other videos. Thank you very much.